Hey guys, Kevin Lifestyle Overland here coming to you with an in-depth look at the new Garmin Overlander GPS device. We're going to dive deep in this thing, see if it truly is a complete solution to all your Overland navigation needs. Before we get started, I just want to give full disclosure. Garmin contacted us and offered to send us this unit for testing and feedback purposes. They haven't asked us or paid us to make this video. Actually, no company has ever paid us to make a video because we're supported by viewers like you. Check us out on patreon.com slash lifestyle overland. We're committed to giving you the full story and the whole truth on the products that we use because at the end of the day, these are the products that we rely on to get our family home safe after each adventure. If it doesn't do its job, no amount of free products or sponsorship checks are worth our lost reputation for promoting something that's going to leave you stranded. Now that doesn't mean we aren't biased. What I mean by that is that we're naturally going to gravitate to what's familiar. So when something new comes along claiming to do a specific task better, it's safe to say that anyone's going to be a bit skeptical at first. But we're open to new ideas and we love trying new gear because providing companies with constructive feedback helps development, which helps move the Overland community forward so we all have better options in the long run. Now that you know where we stand, let's jump right into this review with a quick walkthrough of the build and features found on the unit. Let's start with the physical construction of the unit itself. It has a ruggedized IP5X dustproof outer casing. Unfortunately, it's not listed as being waterproof, but we'll touch on this in a bit. The unit itself weighs in at just under pound, and overall, it has a good feel to it. The specs say this is mil spec tested to mil STD 810, which from what I gather means it's rated for drops from about four feet onto a concrete floor with a half inch of plywood surface. We've not done any drop tests ourselves, so take that for what it's worth. Now here on the side, there's a little flap that you can lift up, and this actually has your micro SD port. You can use this to load uh, tracks or waypoints straight onto the device. You also have a charge port, and this is an eighth inch audio output here as well. The operating system is Android based, but it's locked to the Garmin pre-installed apps only, and the internal memory capacity is 64 gigabytes. Now here on the back, is a magnetic charging base which snaps on the included RAM mount dock. Just keep in mind you'll have to have your own base and connector. Okay, this is the home screen where you can jump straight to one of the two different navigation modes. Drive is a 3D landscape mode that gives you a heads up view of the upcoming terrain. And Explorer is your traditional top down view of the map. This unit comes with Garmin's North America Topo and OpenStreet Maps preloaded. Here we have the track recorder, and it does just what it says. It records your travel, speed, altitude, etc. So you can bring that data back and save it or share it. We've just recently started having this issue with the compass, and for whatever reason, the factory information for calibration is missing. So I'm hoping a future update is going to fix that. The Where To button gives you a ton of options, and we're not going to go through all these right now, but just to give you a quick idea, you can see what's available here. Pitch and roll, pretty obvious what this does. Pitch and roll gauges are for monitoring your pucker factor. Just remember where it's at if you ever do roll, so you'll have a safe operating margin for next time. ABC is simply your, again, compass is having issues. Under ABC, this is where you're gonna have your altimeter, barometer, and compass information. Under the camping icon, you can get quick access to the preloaded iOverlander and public campground database with a few different options on how to search for the perfect spot, whether it's additional campground or remote wild camp. This unit gives you the option to control a Garmin inReach device for satellite communications via text, get weather reports, or SOS notification for emergency assistance. You can connect optional wireless Garmin cameras to this unit, which go for about $160 a piece. This might be handy for the back of our trailer or maybe a nose camera for the trail. There's also a traffic receiver option if you plan on driving to Overland Expo and need to know the fastest route to your booth or campsite. Just kidding, but it'd be handy for someone using this on a daily basis for their commute. The unit also has a Bluetooth receiver, so if you've got an older vehicle that doesn't support Bluetooth, you can connect your phone to this unit for hands-free use, which would be a good fit for our Land Cruiser. There are a few more odds and ends here, but that really covers the most important functions for this review. Now, let's talk real usage. We've been testing this unit for about two months now as we've been traveling the state of New Mexico. We've had the chance to test most of its features along the way and found some things that we liked and a few that we think could stand some improvement. Let's jump in the real world findings now and walk you through the good, the bad, and our wish list of improvements that we'll be sharing with the Garmin team. The first and strongest feature of this unit is the preloaded maps. 
The topo map includes public land boundaries to assist you in traveling legally, and it actually has terrain shading built in so a quick glance at the unit gives you an idea of the surrounding elevation without having to stare at the topo lines themselves to determine the lay of the land. The device also has open street maps for basic point-to-point -point navigation on road. One of the unexpected features that we liked about the unit was the heads-up driving mode, which has a 3D topo layout. It helps us visualize what terrain lies ahead, both on and off the beaten path. It was handy to help us be prepared for the next turn, hill climb, or downgrade. The vehicle profile is a great idea, but we found that the warnings and prompts can become a little bit excessive. We think a bit more refinement in this area could be really helpful for those with larger rigs and trailers, though it's primarily geared towards the large RVs at this time. iOverlander and Ultimate Campgrounds database comes preloaded, which would have been really handy when we were traveling in Alaska and Canada to help find a place to stay for the night without searching for a few bars of service to use the apps on our devices. The addition of these databases was really a great idea. Our favorite physical feature of the device is the ingenious magnetic charging mount, which makes moving in or out of the rig a literal snap with no cables to pull or clamps to release. The inReach integration control for satellite texting, weather updates, and SOS capabilities is a great feature that pairs well with the optional Garmin device. We were happy to find out that it even connected to our older DeLorme version of the inReach. The voice command feature is fast becoming a standard for a lot of devices on the market. But the beauty of this unit is that you don't need an internet connection to get the information that you're after. This was another unexpected function that we surprisingly use quite often. Okay, Garmin. Say a command. Find city. What city in the United States? Red River, New Mexico. Did you say Red River? Yes. New Mexico? One. Would you like to begin navigation? Navigate. Get one mile, turn left on New Mexico 83. And now for the not so stellar items. We found that driving mode is missing a lot of forest roads when compared to the Explore map. This was evident regardless of the zoom level, so we're not sure why the same map data wasn't available in both views. This could potentially cause you to miss a turn if you're relying on that particular view setting to find a forest road. The additional downloadable map options are currently limited to the USGS quads and satellite imagery. The method used to download them to the device is very cumbersome and time consuming. You basically have to zoom to a specific level and then navigate to the map you want to download, then move to the view, then get the correct zoom level and repeat for each quad or satellite section you want to take along with you. This is very time consuming. We were a bit disappointed to find that any downloaded maps are either on or off. There's no way to blend the maps by using levels of transparency. The process to swap between the layers is also a little bit cumbersome because you have to go back into the menu and select the one that you want and back back out again. We found that you have to zoom in relatively close to get certain roads and labels to appear. We'd like to see more detail at a wider view to make locating trails and points of interest a little bit easier. When we compared map data against the Gaia GPS app, there was a significant number of forest roads and trails that were present in the Gaia app that were not displayed in the Garmin device. This could cause significant issues when attempting to reroute to civilization in the event of an emergency or to simply seek repairs. While track and waypoint syncing is supposed to be the highlight of this system, it unfortunately did not work for us. After several attempts and even trying to create a new account and attempt to get them to sync, it lost our tracks in the past two months all of them. We're hoping this was a random glitch and not a common issue. And finally, okay, time to get real. What's the brass tax on something like this? Well, the current retail price for the Garmin Overlander is $700, and that's before any of the optional equipment. We know it's very expensive to design, develop, and manufacture a dedicated hardware device like this. And while we don't think there's a massive markup on this over the actual cost, the real question is, is it worth $700 to the average customer? At this price point, we think most overlanders are probably going to steer away from this device once they find that most of the features can be installed on a tablet or phone for a lot less cash. While the concept of having a dedicated device for navigation will certainly help with the stability of the software, it also limits people from using the device for multiple purposes. In our opinion, the only way to entice more users is to offer more bang for buck that justifies a $700 investment. Now we aren't writing this unit off just yet, but there needs to be some significant value added or a reduction in cost before the average user will be willing to take the plunge. So what would make this a high value device and a real contender on the market? What functions or features would turn it into a one-stop shop overland navigation solution? 
We're glad you asked. We would like to see better preloaded maps with complete forest service road data and a better method of delineating the public land areas. As of right now, the maps appear quite grainy with how the public land is identified by stripes and it isn't easy to view while bouncing down a rough trail. With the introduction of multiple map download options, we'd like to see a multi-layer transparency adjustment method instead of just basic on-off settings for each type of map. This will allow the user to blend the layers as needed to meet a certain need or scenario. Next, there absolutely needs to be a better download method for these additional maps. This can be accomplished by offering either a regional or state option, or this can be accomplished by using a grid overlay with the options to select multiple squares to download. We'd also like to see more map and overlay sources available for download. MVUM layers, private land ownership, 72-hour precipitation forecasts, etc. would bring this device up to speed with other app options currently on the market. Speaking of MVUM, just as a reminder, it's up to you to ensure that you're traveling on a legal route within the National Forest. The only way you can absolutely be sure that you're in the right is to have an official MVUM paper map or PDF download. We think the ability to download these to the unit and show your GPS location superimposed on that MVUM map would be a feature that would make this device extremely attractive to us for full-time use. We were a bit surprised that the effort to create a standalone outdoor device didn't incorporate some level of water resistance into the design. We'd love to see future versions offered with waterproofing for outdoor use, which opens it up to the UTV market as well. And our last suggestion is a big one. We would love to see the inReach functions integrated into this device instead of requiring a complete additional device. This addition alone would really help justify the $700 price tag and offer something no other device or app on the market can. Garmin is a massive company with the personnel and resources to mold this product into an extremely powerful and intuitive navigation device. It's our hope that with feedback from users like us and a commitment to pursue the needs of the overland market, that it will be a constantly improving platform which will continue to grow in value. As of right now, the main reason to buy this unit is due to its grab and go appeal. Think of it this way. You could literally jump into the rig, power this up, and navigate across the country without ever having to download a single file. That's a huge advantage. When you combine that ability with the onboard iOverlander and public campground database, you'll never have to have cell service to create an epic adventure. We believe these two primary features alone will appeal to a large number of folks looking for a very simple way to get outside without having to do a lot of research or downloading maps on other devices. Now, when you throw in the ability to text via satellite, communicate with support during an emergency, and download weather reports with the optional inReach device, you've got a significant list of must-haves for the average overlander. So, has Garmin done it? Have they changed the game and given us a device that will trump all of the navigation methods on the market? Not quite. Have they developed a device that has the potential to become a true contender in the overland navigation market? Absolutely. At the end of the day, it's the value factor that will ultimately determine whether or not it's worth $700 to the average traveler. So, what are your thoughts? Is it worth $700 to you right now? Or what additional features would it need to have to get you there? Post your opinions and suggestions in the comments below. I'm curious to hear what you have to say. As for us, we're gonna to continue to use this alongside our other navigation apps due to the benefit of the basic preloaded information, which gives us a bit of redundancy in the case one method fails. If we continue to see significant improvements as Garmin rolls out updates, We'll be back here in another video to share what we found. In our opinion, it's a solid unit with a massive amount of basic data that's going to meet the needs of a lot of people right out of the box. I want to leave you with a parting thought. You have to understand that you are responsible for your own safety and you are responsible for ensuring that you're traveling on a legal road. We highly recommend that no matter what you choose as your primary device, that you have multiple means of navigation in your kit. Electronics can die, downloaded data can become corrupted, GPS signals can be disrupted, and if you're relying on a single point of failure, you could be left in a bad situation. So don't let the perceived security of any device keep you from doing your research on the areas you plan to travel, and be prepared to get back to civilization using multiple methods. Remember, paper doesn't need batteries, and a compass only points one direction. That's it guys, that's the review of the Garmin Overlander I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. If you did, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to hit that as well. But, you know, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. 
If you really, 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 really like what we do, you can support us on Patreon and keep us producing more videos just like this so that you're informed on new devices just like this. So until next time, safe travels.